in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed songs of power songs of the spirit and yesterday we had time to just soak in one of such songs as God spoke to us and so I want to take about five minutes from my own time and if you would just give me that room I would step back and I asked Colin to sing for us a song that came in my place of prayer my place of worship this was a very deep encounter I had with the Holy Spirit and then I began to hear this song in my spirit and I, and when God brings songs like this I told you that songs are ladders in the spirit they help our ascendance in the spirit so whilst you listen I'd like you to connect with your heart and I'll be up here just after a few minutes and then we'll just take it. I hope that we'll have the time. I'll just share just one more component from our series. And then we'll have the time to pray and speak over people tonight. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Come on. How many of us want the Lord to breathe upon your life? Come on, lift up those hands and say, breathe on me, God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Would you breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Upon my life, everybody, come on, breathe, Lord, lift it up. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Yeah. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Ask him tonight. Breathe. Upon my life, come on, sing, breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. breathe. Upon my life, say it again. Sing, breathe, Lord.
see. Come on. I'm money. That's it, South Africa. Your power. Your wisdom. Till the name. See Jesus. Lifted up. Exalted. Come on. Exalted. Say it again. I receive. This is a personal thing. Come on, make it your prayer. Your power and your wisdom till the nations Woo. see Jesus. Hey, glory, glory, Father. Hey, sing, breathe, Lord, breathe. Every nation, lift it up. Come on. Say, yeah. Yeah. Lift those hands and receive from him. Sing, breathe the Lord. Lift it up. Sing, breathe. We need the breath of the Almighty. Yeah. We need the breath of the Almighty. We need your breath, Lord. We need your glory. Yeah. Breathe. Breathe. Pour out your glory. Breathe upon my life tonight. Breathe upon my ministry. Breathe upon my destiny. Someone pray. South Africa pray. Shalabaka paroska frenda beleke poshiata. Breathe, oh God. Breathe, oh God. Breathe, oh God. Shalesh kabranda gebereko sabras kavala katash. Hale de bara sovran de bele ke bari ataba. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Till the nations sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, say hallelujah, 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 say Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Ezekiel 37 says that Ezekiel was taken in a valley that was full of bones and those bones were very dry and he said son of man can these bones live again he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy speak to these bones then the bones now had flesh but there was no life 
and then it says prophesy to the four winds and say oh wind breathe upon this slave and the bible says there arose an exceeding great army may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you amazing amazing let's give colin and his team a big big god bless you hallelujah commissioned with power tonight is an impartation service and just for a quick recap we began our discussion yesterday how that the church has been ordained by god to be a church with wisdom with power and with grace that the church was ordained by god to be the clearest most visible manifestation of his power his grace his glory in the earth and we said that the end of the believers journey with god is glory that every time god begins his walk with any believer regardless what you face on the way the end of that journey is that your life becomes an effulgence of his glory his power his wisdom hallelujah but we did say that the church in its current state is not a a reflection of god's expectation as at yet in as much as god has ordained for us to enjoy a life of glory and grace that the current state of the church is not yet the standard and the expectation that God has for us and we identified three reasons for these um, this disappointed state if I use that word number one I said the absence of a thorough revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is Number two, we said the second reason why the church has been incapacitated grossly so is because there is a bankruptcy of the revelation of our corporate mandate, our purpose, our assignment, and our mandate. And number three, that the church is largely unaware by revelation of the vast resources and the extent of power that has been invested by God. And so we took the first part yesterday night. And for those of you who did not make it this morning, please do well to get the teachings so that you will understand the mandate that the church as a universal body of Christ, we have a corporate mandate. It's captured in what theologians will call the Great Commission. And we said that it is a threefold mandate number one world evangelization the first mandate that was given to all believers second discipleship the maturity of the saints and then third territorial or societal transformation that if your understanding of the great commission does not capture these three dimensions it is incomplete world evangelization discipleship and then territorial transformation. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Let's read together. If you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places this is paul teaching the church in ephesus and then he tells them that god through christ hath blessed us his church with all spiritual blessings so every believer in christ has access to all spiritual blessings well the bible tells us that these blessings are not earthbound they reside in heavenly places and then in Christ. Verse 19, Paul is still speaking, Ephesians 1. And so he's praying over the church in Ephesus and he prayed 
certain prayers that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It then says, the heart of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. And then when we get to verse 19, among the many things that he desires for us to know is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That means the highest dimension of God God's power ever displayed in the world of men was the power that was exerted when Jesus rose up from the dead. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. That in order of strength, nothing compares to the power that was exerted that brought Jesus from Hades back to the earth. That if we understand that power, it can lift any man from anywhere. To the position of glory. The power that took the son of the living God. From a realm beyond the earth. And brought him back to the earth. Paul is saying. That among the many things. That he sought for the church to understand. Was the extent of that power. I hope you know that the power. Did not just bring Jesus to the earth. But it elevated him. Until he was seated at the right hand. Of the father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The church that God has ordained is a church of power. I wrote something here that I want you to listen very carefully. When God calls a people, the first thing he does is to reveal himself to them. The second thing he does is to give you a mandate on the strength of that revelation. And then the third and final thing he does is to empower you with the requisite dimension of grace to carry out that mandate. So when he calls you, he does not call you for an assignment. He calls you to know him. But that as you explore God from that encounter, a mandate will come out. The mandate is not the basis for the encounter. The mandate is to know him. That is why even when the mandate ends, your pursuit remains. Because before the mandate came, in the beginning, God not in the beginning, an assignment. In the beginning, God. Before ministry, before business. So when ministry goes, God still remains. Are you getting this now? It's a simple principle, but you need to understand this. God never calls people to ministry. No. Follow me. Not follow it. Follow me and I will make you. Hallelujah. The Bible says he called his disciples to be with him and then that he might send them. So just because you are called does not mean you are sent. You see, when God calls you, he calls you to himself. But out of that revelation, because God is like a house with many rooms, as you explore the vastness of God, out of that encounter, to prove that you really encountered God, you must come out with a mandate. The dimension of God you see becomes your message to the nations. Hallelujah. But then he does not just send you with that message. Like he told the apostles, tarry ye in Jerusalem until I have given you a mandate, I have given you a message. But you need empowerment to carry out that mandate. Many people understand their message. But the truth is that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is largely not empowered enough to demonstrate the things that we claim we know about God. The things that we claim God has said. And because of our inability to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit to our world, like I said in the morning, we have sold a Jesus that the nations are rejecting. Because when the apostle taught, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, it is not just the message, the power of God unto salvation. Are we learning now? 
very important acts chapter 4 and verse 33 i want us to read it together as loud as you can acts chapter 4 may this be your testimony after this conference let's read together one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all upon how many upon how many upon preachers upon apostles upon them hallelujah upon them all great grace was upon them all acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was speaking to the gentiles this would be the salvation of the gentiles and then he made a profound statement having been a disciple of jesus himself mentored directly by the savior here's what he had to say how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and on the strength of that power he went about it takes more than compassion to do good it takes power and then healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him how god anointed jesus isn't it amazing that jesus as the word incarnate had to be anointed with the holy ghost and with power you will think because of the word jesus being the word he will not need to be anointed he would have been surprised in ministry if he were not anointed hallelujah now there are many people who are trying to produce results in the kingdom and they have ignored genuine spiritual empowerment to their detriment and i hope you understand that when i talk about being empowered is more than falling down and standing up we're talking of the capacity to produce god's dimension of results even though you are a man the ability to shift the climates of nations hmm. joshua looks at the sun and says stand still i don't know what you call that but that is power ladies and gentlemen that is power Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and preach christ unto them and the bible says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that philip said hearing and seeing this is what caught their attention it was not just the message listening to the message was a latter part hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles next verse for unclean spirits any spirit that was not of the Christ crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed I like the next verse and there was joy all over South Africa there was joy the power of God is directly connected to this kind and this dimension of joy ladies and gentlemen please hear me the purpose of our meeting tonight is not just to get you excited i came with a hunger and a desperation in my heart that someone perhaps will be hungry enough to receive something genuine tonight genuine grace genuine power preachers it takes power beyond eloquence to communicate the gospel and let the nations experience that transforming power that's why i ask these dear people to sing that song i receive and then i manifest your power and your wisdom and i insist on it until the nations not see joshua selman until they see jesus exalted hallelujah so jesus shows up and news is spreading around town who is this man that just appeared from nowhere the blind see the deaf hear cripples walk he walks into a house and he sees a woman and 
you know, one of the persons is having a fever and he casually holds the person, rebukes the fever and says, please come and serve food for us. Can you imagine that? They looked at him, he calmed the storm. Shalom, be still. And the Bible says the storm and the waves, just like that. And the disciples said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds, the seas obey him. The generation that will bring glory to Jesus will be a generation that understands power. The generation that will bring glory to Jesus must be a generation that understands power. Salvation was birthed in the place of power. If Jesus did not resurrect, our preaching is useless. It took power to bring the son of the living God from Hades, the place of the dead. And that power was so exalted, he was not the one who came out alone. The Bible says the departed saints, he lined them up and brought them out graves open when he resurrected. And that these saints walked around the streets of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We have reduced the power of God to falling down and standing up. And no matter what I say and no matter what I do, once someone shouts or falls down, that becomes an accreditation that there is power there. Not to downplay it, but ladies and gentlemen, you will need more than that for Pharaoh to let pe God's people go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh demands a greater sign than just a shout or a fall. Moses said, who shall I go and tell Pharaoh has sent me? He said, come, I am. Take your rod, cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Pick it by the tail. Put your hand in your bosom. Brought it out and it was leprous. Put it back and it was whole. What was God doing to the man? At the end of that encounter, Moses said, I'm ready. He stands before Pharaoh and he says, I'm not here for a long discussion. Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may go and serve me. You will think after that wonderful rendition, Pharaoh would look at him and say, wow, I'm scared. So there is a God greater than all the gods we've known. <laughs> Pharaoh laughed at him and said, you're wasting your time. You've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of witchcraft, the center of wizardry. And after nine plagues, the Bible tells us that one last plague that this mighty God brought. I want you to know that every deliverance you see in the Bible came on the strength of power, not discussion. Once upon a time, there were three Hebrew boys who refused to bow to the 90 feet stature of Nebuchadnezzar. They said, we have been taught to honor government, but on this matter, as touching our faith, we will not bow. And they, they, they increased the fire in the furnace the Bible says those who threw them were burned by the fire. But as soon as they got in there, let me show you the ministry of power. They saw four men. One was already there. The chains that were used to hold their hand and their feet, it was loosed on its own accord. And they were walking around there. The Bible says in Daniel 3, men who the fire had no power over. How about Daniel? In the lion's den, he was thrown there and left for dead. And by morning, the king would come and say, Oh, Daniel, has the God whom you serve, is he able? That means, is his power that far to shut the mouth of lions? And right from a pit, Daniel says, Oh, live forever, king. The God whom I serve has sent his angel. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power, your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, 
glorified so breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life will you breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i do not know any man in church history you start from the book of acts down to modern history they were ordinary men until power came did you hear what i said they were ordinary men until power arrived collision with genuine power turns a man into a sign and a wonder i have read the stories of great men and women of god in modern history Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to go back to history and see the kinds of men that this earth had produced in Christ. We don't come close to the manifestations of power that these men had and saw in their meetings. I can tell you that. The things that we pride about were child's play. You will not even be qualified to be a preacher by our standard today in their days. No way. No, they will send you back to the wilderness for training. These were men who carried power. The Bible says men whom the earth was not worthy of. Hallelujah. They brought elemental forces under control. These guys, these guys were in power. And even the governments of the day knew. It was not by shouting. They demonstrated a dimension of grace, of grace and power. Oh, may God restore us. May God restore us. May God restore genuine power to the church. Genuine power to the church. Hallelujah. When God called me to ministry, I cried and I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, please do not send me with a message alone. I know the kind of world that I was born into. The world of our parents were people who were given to loyalty. Even if they don't agree with you, they will respect you. But this world we have been sent to, they need a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Are we together now? There are many alternatives today to our world. And I said yesterday that if we do not restore genuine power to the body of Christ, we are going to literally lose a demography to the devil. The average preacher, among the many things that we preach, we ask people to give up witchcraft. We ask people to give up certain negative satanic traditional practices. And then we propose to them that on coming to Jesus, there is superior power to birth and bring solutions. And many of them have left these hidden works of darkness and unrighteousness. And then on coming to church, they met a plethora of disappointments. I could run to a shrine and then by the next day I get favor in the office. Now you've told me to give up that shrine and you told me that Jesus was powerful enough. Now I love him beyond miracles but can there be a consolation to my Christian experience? Hallelujah. I cried to the Lord and I said, Father, I do not want the kind of ministry where I misrepresent you because of the bankruptcy of power. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but the demonstration of power, that your faith will not rest upon the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Hallelujah. In Bible days, they never had to tell anybody that they came to church or they met Jesus there was always a spiritual souvenir that they took back so you would watch someone come oppressed possessed and return in his sound mind who will not come to such a God who will not bow before such a God ladies and gentlemen I want you to join me in this campaign to cry for a genuine restoration a restoration of power to the church listen 
we were not just commissioned with a mandate we were commissioned with power hallelujah i've had the honor and the privilege of traveling across a few nations and i have seen what the power of god can do i have seen systems shut down when they see a jesus that works T.L. Osborne wrote a very powerful book, The Message That Works. There is a message that does not work. Propositions without the engracing to defend it. Jesus heals. Amen. No healing. Jesus lifts. Amen. No lifting. Jesus can turn your life around. Amen. To a point where sometimes if we are not careful, members get used to our powerlessness their amen is just to help put a full stop to what we're saying but there is no genuine expectation do you know what it will mean if after this conference from the north to the south, east and the west of South Africa, men suddenly arise, every altar becomes a place of fire a place of power Sunday services fire Wednesday services fire by the spirit of God when the sick are healed just when you are about to recover from that news that is on papers then here comes another one a man who had been blind known to everybody now his eyes open then we hear that someone somewhere who has been crippled for years now gets up from his chair come on now I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest in my generation your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified so breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life say breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe lord hallelujah so God can send you and say go to this region and you step in there like an inferno of fire in a matter of weeks mighty manifestations of the power of God can I tell you the world of men was designed to not ignore the miraculous it is impossible for the world of men to see genuine miracles, manifestations of the hand of God and ignore it. No, it is not a product you find in the market. You don't find power in a bank. You don't find power in a library. It resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. I came to provoke a holy anger within your spirit. This is not the church Jesus died for. Not yet. Not yet. We are still becoming and we can insist. Every man of God can insist. Every worshiper can insist. Every every businessman can insist. A restoration of power to the church. Genuine power. Listen. Isn't it a shame today? That because of the extent of powerlessness in the church, unfortunately, painfully unfortunately, that there are people who can coin miracles that did not happen. Such an indictment to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. To the extent that if something happens now, people have to verify, was it really God? When you are prophesying or ministering in the Spirit, you have to put guards because they, they are, the, the first part of call is suspicion come on now 
Harush. I said in my lifetime, I will be one of those that God will use to restore power. Genuine power. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Once again, the world will know that Jesus died indeed. They are tired of our stories. They need to see a demonstration of the life of God, the power of God, the ministry of the Spirit. We bring the ministry of the Spirit to the nations in a way that all and sundry will be forced to admit that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. John chapter 3 and verse 2. He says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. It says, for no man. Mm -mm. This is not a product that is affordable in the world of men. If you find men with it, they outsource it from a dimension that is beyond the earth. No man can do these miracles which thou doest. Except, that means there is a condition. Ordinarily, men should not walk in that level of power. How do you look at a nation and say by this time tomorrow, not in a radio station. How do you look at a nation and say by this time tomorrow? It's like saying by this time tomorrow, everybody in this place and in South Africa will be the owner of a home. How dare in our world they would jail you for provoking the expectations of people. Jesus tells 5,000 people, you imagine a crowd of hungry people like this, having tabernacled for over three days. He said, do not let them go like this. It will be an indictment on the revelation of God as merciful and compassionate. Give them something to eat. Ah, Jesus, don't cause trouble. You are already an enemy of government. Don't add that trouble. And he says, no. A young lad comes with, with how many loaves now? Five loaves and two fish. And he lifts it gives thanks and say go and distribute it imagine leaving that crusade and you go back what did you eat i'm fine what happened i was served from which bakery who did that jesus will you go for the next crusade of course he meets a woman at the well and such display of intelligence and wisdom and power she first thought he was one of the customers. Perhaps the seventh husband on his way coming. And after that discussion, she said, no, I sense you are a prophet. Come see a man. Come see a man. That is the message of a woman who met power. Come see a man. How about the madman in Gadara? The Bible says that man had the destiny of an evangelist. And the devil had picked him and chained him literally chained a territory by the bondage of one man but as soon as jesus arrived there came by the spirit we are legion i don't have that time he says go with one word of power and authority the bible says they came and they met the man sitting with jesus in his right mind became an evangelist South Africa, this is not just to excite us. I will show you one more key and then we'll pray. Please sit down. Please sit down. You've been standing. Let there be a restoration genuine power genuine power genuine power i'm just seeing wind moving over this place now this is what i see in the spirit it's a mighty wind that is resting upon people it's what i'm seeing there is an activation happening to your spirit man please be sensitive receive manifest his power 
is wisdom receive manifest Hallelujah. his power is wisdom receive manifest his power listen one of the first miracles that God used to announce this man you see standing before you many of you have heard the story many years ago someone had a very complicated medical issue spine broken confirmed medically they were waiting for a surgeon to come from India and perform that delicate surgery with a, a neck neck collar and all kinds of gadgets it was on phone I pray for this gentleman and I said do you believe now in truth I don't know today if I really believed that something was going to happen but I prayed anyway and as soon as I spoke over that gentleman I know that there was a shout there and he removed from the other end of the phone removed the neck collar bent and did what he could not do and he got up still with the phone and ran to his mother's room as soon as he opened the door the last thing I heard on phone was Jesus and that was it listen true story by the next day you know how you come to a man's house when he loses a loved one when people heard he was healed they said it was a lie they had to come and verify I know what the power of God can do I had to see the x-ray myself and see the gentleman before and after come on now look let me tell you the truth genuine results at the end of any argument it's true don't downplay results you will be joking not in today's world do you know from that time I started having calls from nurses and doctors within the same hospital sir I've been having an issue I didn't tell anybody nobody will tell you their problems until they are sure you have the power to solve their problems did you hear what I said nobody will waste their time and open up the secrets of their heart listen let me tell you this results are so powerful that a patient can stand before a doctor who is as young as his child or his grandchild and even strip himself if need be without shame because that child is called a consultant and he has the power medically speaking to attend to a delicate issue hallelujah if you were taking your bath as a woman and I open the door it will be an offense that I would demand to tell you I will have to tell you I'm sorry but when I come as a consultant I can perform a surgery and you are not ashamed let me tell you the truth until men see genuine power they will not open up their pain and their scars to be healed why should I open up my pain and my scars and at the end of it you just generally say let's pray and both me and you we know that nothing happened there where the carcasses are there the eagles the vultures all of them will come come see a man can I tell you South Africa I'm praying for all of us but particularly with all due respect for ministers of the gospel all this talk of saying church is not growing I submit to you by the spirit of the living God there is one explanation the bankruptcy of genuine genuine power not stage managed power genuine power no our world has not yet invented technology that ignores power mm -mm. Mm -mm. study God's generals for a meeting that will start 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. by 2 3 people will come and stand outside when people see power they can excuse any other thing that is not right provided they know at the end of it they, if, if no matter what the excuse is a man tore the zinc in the Bible and brought another person 
because they, they, we will discuss with the house owner later on but let this man be healed can I tell you the truth we must admit that we have sold a Jesus to the nations that is not the true representation of the one who died and rose again Paul's first sermon he said let it be known to you O Israel that this same Jesus you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says the men were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? It says, repent for the remission of your sin and you will receive this promise for the promise is unto you. Your children, children's children, as many as are far off, even those that the Lord will call. It's been my prayer even up until now. Father, restore this dimension of grace. Where did we miss it? Where did we miss it? Hallelujah. I submit to you sincerely what we call power in this generation, Ba. We thank God. But I can tell you, in Bible days, you will not be a preacher. Not with what we call power. Mm -mm. There was a man in the Bible called Samuel. The Bible says the word of God upon that man's lip did not fall to the ground. If Samuel looked at you and said, be blessed. This is beyond just shouting amen. You would begin to rejoice. One time when the donkey of Saul, the son of Kish, remember, was missing. For three days they went around searching. Not finding it, they said, we are wasting our time here. There is a prophet. There is somebody we know that the word of God is strong with this man. Let's go and meet him. They took a gift. And as soon as they saw Samuel, Samuel said, no, forget about the issue of the donkey. You go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. As soon as Saul met Samuel, the donkey from anywhere it was started returning home. Read your Bible, Hebrews 11. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. We're talking about the governmental church. A church with authority and power indeed. Samuel was never seated on any throne, but he enthroned and dethroned kings. You could misbehave with anybody but not Samuel. To the point that God was ready to ordain David. But Samuel was still negotiating the continuity of Saul's reign. And God had to come to him and say, how long shall you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul already as king. Take on your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. You are delaying another person's destiny. Go and anoint that young boy. Hallelujah. Manifestations of genuine power. Not just supernatural power. Power translated as signs and wonders. Power translated as wisdom that science cannot explain. Power translated as dimensions of possibilities and realities. Is it not in your Bible that the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah? Ladies and gentlemen, on barefoot he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. Is that not in your Bible? My Bible says they shall take up they shall drink poison and they shall not die. COVID brought us to our knees and taught us a lesson that we need to know God more. Are we together now? Do you agree with me on that? It's an uncomfortable truth, but we have to admit it. We shouted that we had the life of God until COVID came. And because of a track record of our powerlessness, even the government did not consider it an advantage to leave us as support systems to people. They saw us as an interruption to ending that, that pandemic. But not John G. Lake. Mm -mm. Not John G. Lake. He proved to science that he was not a nuisance. Allow me go and pray for the people and they said, leave this place. You are an interruption to what we are doing. He said, now you take some of the foam from the mouth of those who had this thing. Place it on my hand. 
And history tells us that they checked it and it died. Hallelujah. And yet the Bible says, as he is. Have you read that in your Bible? That as he is, so are we. Now, my assignment tonight is not just to provoke anger in you and leave you in that state. I'm provoking your heart deliberately. Let me show you three keys to accessing the power of God. And then, I'll just pray for us and we'll wrap up tonight. God's power must be made available to the saints. God's power must be put on display. Now listen, every believer in Christ has access to the empowerment of the spirit. But access does not equal possession. You can have access. Are we together? But you must understand the dynamics of possession. I can give you a check of 10,000 rams, that is access. But you have not possessed it yet because you are not able to use it in that state to do anything meaningful. You will need to know how to go and transact to convert it to cash or to whatever format that will suit you to transact with. Am I right on that? So we have access to power in Christ. But many believers have not understood the kingdom system this is my assignment tonight i want to show you how to be endued with power not just tell you to be endued with power there is a system built in the dealings of god with men where ordinary men can encounter they can become bona fide recipients of god's power hmm. let's go to the school of power for three five minutes According to scripture, there are three biblical platforms for accessing empowerment. Empowerment that will cause us to be witnesses indeed. And please, I want you to pay attention. Number one, the first platform by which the saints become genuinely en empowered is an encounter with the spirit of power. A direct encounter with the spirit of power. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. A direct encounter with the spirit of power. There is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit called the spirit of power. It says, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. By the spirit of the Lord. A man can encounter God through your hunger. Are we together now? Your hunger can lead you to a solid encounter by grace and by mercy. And out of that encounter, an intercourse will happen in the spirit that leaves you an anointed version of yourself. Ordinary men. But when they encountered God, they left with power. Moses went to the burning bush as an ordinary man. A Jew who was running. He ran out of Egypt for his life. Having killed an Egyptian. But not when he met the God of the Hebrews. His ordinary rod became the rod of God. And he says, Moses, take up that rod wherewith you will walk signs and wonders. When he got to the Red Sea, he struck that rod and the river parted hither and Tita, granting access on dry ground. Ladies and gentlemen, men can encounter power. Are we together? Men can encounter power. It was A.A. A. Allen who told his wife, darling, I'm going to pray. I will lock up myself and I'm not coming out of that place until I meet God. That was what he said. I'm going to lock up myself, my dear wife. My apologies that you will not have my attention for a few days. But I'm looking for something that I can serve my generation with. And the Bible says John Lake, or history tells us, that John Lake went and locked up himself. Crying to the God of heaven. There is something about genuine cry that comes from the, a broken and a contrite heart. Remember I taught you. 
that in the Lord's prayer, everything in the economy of heaven is centered around kingdom come and the will of God. So if your pursuit, your request, your petitions and all that you desire is not to glorify Christ, that prayer already, you don't need an attack, it will not be answered. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Then because of your kingdom, give us this day our daily bread. Because of your kingdom, forgive us our trespasses. Because of your kingdom, lead us not into temptation. Because of your kingdom, deliver us from evil. Everything is with respect to kingdom come and his will being done. There's no time to share with you stories of my own life. Times when I locked myself sincerely with a heart crying to God. I just went there to pour my heart. To say, Lord, if you are, if, if, if you are looking for vessels that can carry genuine power and herald your name to the nations, here is an available and usable vessel. Hallelujah. An encounter with the spirit of power. Someone after this conference, that's when your own retreat starts. You will need to go somewhere and lock yourself and say, Lord, I'm not looking for power for a name. I'm not looking for power so that they call me Apostle Joshua Selman the Great. That is a mundane pursuit. I seek this genuine impartation because I want to see your name lifted. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see climate shift over cities and territories by the Spirit of God. When it has to do with the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same, God's answer will always be yes and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, many of us fast. Many of us pray. I can tell you why the fasting and prayer of this generation only leaves us lean and maybe with an encounter with familiar spirits. Do you know why? Because it was lust that drove us into that secret place in the first place. So I saw, I, I've seen what Apostle Felix has done. No, I'm also a human being. And you take it as a mundane challenge that leads you to fast 40 days dry. Your heart was already corrupted from day one. At best, you will only encounter the mercy of God in that place. He will tell you, my dear son, this labor in the spirit you are doing is not profitable because it's coming from a corrupted heart. Can I tell you, in my walk with God, the privilege of studying the fathers of faith and the study of scripture, the most, uh, the most foundational basis for receiving anything from God, second only to his mercy and love, is your heart condition. Your heart condition vetoes your fasting, vetoes your prayer. You can fast all you want, and I'm not against it, you should know that. You can pray all you can, but if your heart is not right, how does your heart get right? Let me show you a scripture. Second Chronicles 25, verse 1 and 2. The Bible talks about a man called Amaziah. Second Chronicles 20. 25, 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture that will really bless your heart. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. Is that in your Bible? He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. Shout verse 2 with all your heart. Are you ready? One to read. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart. How do you do what was right? The activity was correct. The preaching was correct. The singing was correct. The giving was correct. However, it was not accepted because the Bible says not with a perfect heart. You can do ministry keeping all the rules right and wonder why it does not work. Maybe God is answering some preacher here. You are saying what is wrong? All the keys I have kept. That is where the thing is. I have written great songs. Why are my songs not going to the nations? This is where it is. 
because it is still your song. Ah! The songs we sing, they all belong to you, and even the air we breathe, it all belongs to you, belongs to you. That is the generation that will access power genuinely. That everything about your life, it belongs to you. Amaziah did what was right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. So the Bible says, I the Lord, I search the heart. I test the reins to give unto every man according to the states that I find there. So while you are praying, your heart is also praying. And God is hearing both. Your mouth can be saying, Lord, I love you. And your heart can be saying, give me quickly. I need to make it. That God has the ability to hear the speakings of your heart. Is it not in your Bible? Say not in your heart. The heart has a voice. An encounter with the spirit of power demands genuine brokenness. Genuine brokenness. That you get to a point where you are on your knees before the Lord and you say, Father, this is not about me. This is not just about a desire for fame. This is not just about a, I know you are trusting, you need kingdom millionaires on earth. You can trust me. You can trust me by your grace. That my pursuit for money is not just to make a name. My pursuit for grace and anointing. That everything that I seek is to see the nation see you revealed. That's why God brought this song. Can I tell you? I submit to you by the spirit of the living God. You know, people say, Apostle, you are humble. My humility is not, is not, it did not come by default. It's a revelation. When you understand how powerful God is and how much he can do without you. How, he, how much he can do without you. It becomes an eternal privilege for you to be used by God. That revelation will strangle pride naturally and forever. Humility is not something that you struggle with mechanically. It is a revelation, a product, a conclusion. A way of life that is a conclusion. There is something you, when you encounter God and you see the vastness of his power. You will join the psalmist to say, what is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man. Must you use me? You created the heavens and the earth without my assistance. You have not become that powerless. And if you have chosen to use me, then it remains an eternal privilege. Listen. This is the kind of orientation that workers must have in church. Are we together? Oh, I tell you an uncomfortable truth. God can do without you. Get over it. He can do without you. Number two. Let's hurry up. The second platform to encounter the power of God genuine power that speaks his purposes to the nations are you ready the second dimension of his power is his power that is accessed by encountering his word the power of God that is accessed when you encounter his word the word of God indeed carries light and it carries within it power. Are we learning? Mm. Habakkuk chapter 3. 3 and 4. Please give us amplified. Let's hurry up. A lady will begin to laugh in the spirit. That laughter is not just a carnal laughter. There is a manifestation a birthing of something in the spirit. Now, 
when God does these things, it is because he is making people. This convergence, the Holy Spirit is hovering around us and there are things that he's doing within our spirit. God approaching from Sinai. He comes from Edom or Teman. And the Bible says the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor and majesty covers the heavens and the earth is full of his praise. Now read verse 4 if you are a Christian. Ready? His brightness is like the sunlight. He has bright rays flashing from his hand and there in the sunlight splendor is the hiding place of his power. That God's power has a location. He hides it in his light. And the only way to find that light is to find his word. Because it is the entrance of his word that giveth light. A man can stay with the word of God and from it light. Reminds me of a vision that I had many years ago. I've shared this vision endless times. That I was standing before a giant door. And it had many smaller doors. And I noticed there were scriptures like a post office box. Written on all of the smaller doors. They were opening and closing. And every time they opened, light came out from it. And the spirit of the living God told me, every time you catch a revelation of scripture, the power that is behind it falls upon you so that you can defend what you now call revelation. Revelation is not revelation to you until you can demonstrate its reality. There is a power component that follows every scripture. If you tell me you know the scripture, I don't need to argue with you. I will look for the power component that was sent to back up that speaking. So when you say I have caught a revelation of prosperity, I don't need to argue with you. I will have to check your life to verify there is a light component. If you say you have caught a revelation of influence, I will not need to argue with you. Let me see how the nations treat you in light of the power that you have now accessed. If the nations reject you, you have not caught it yet. Go back to the school of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.